Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got a great guest on. His name is Alex Ritz with Pro Hospitality Group. He's going to come on and talk to us a little bit about what they're doing, how they've been faring during the pandemic, how does 2021 look for them, and hopefully we're all looking for the bright side, right, in 2021. Good morning, Alex. How are you? Good morning, Ted. Thank you for having me. Hey, absolutely. Thank you for thank you for getting up, getting up a little bit early. I know you're on the West Coast, but hey, right. tell us a little bit about you, how you got into hospitality, and then tell us a little bit about your company. All right. Well, thank you, Ted. I'll try to uh, wrap it, sum it up. Um, so, Pro Hospitality Group is a full service hospitality company, meaning that we have uh, several services um, that uh, that we're doing. And how I entered into the hospitality industry was as a real estate broker commercial real estate broker but only for hotels so i specialized and focused on hotel sales only for the last 15 years okay. and that's really my uh, my forte so uh, hotel financing hotel transactions uh, negotiations between um, lenders and borrowers between franchisors and franchisees and sellers and buyers is really uh, where where i came in and, and grew into this this uh, this industry and in the last six years, six years ago, I wanted to also uh, get onto the ownership side after you know several transactions and, and understanding the management of hotels a little bit better and the transaction, uh, uh, transactional aspect of it, I wanted to be on the ownership side. So um, I created a, an investment platform uh, and this is where really the name Pro Hospitality Group came in. Um, and uh, we, uh, through this investment platform, we uh, bought and we now own and operate six hotels. Oh, wow. uh, awesome. Yeah, thank you. And um, on the brokerage side, we've been dealing from all sorts of, uh, of, uh, of um, hotel, uh, ho hotel uh, uh, categories. So we've been selling from the you know, economy hotel, from the days in, you know, small best Western, uh, the mid scale with the Holiday Express, Hampton Inn, you know Hilton Garden Inn, and we went up and we we even sold you know uh, full fledged Marriott conference centers. So uh, so we've been on the broker side we're pretty large. And when I was brokering, I noticed that there was um, a segment where uh, I could come in on the ownership side that was not on the economy side, not on the and compete with the um, higher end. Hilton Marriott product and compete with the Reeds, but I wanted to to buy, and I thought that the um, the sweet spots for my investment group was in the limited service uh, mid tiered hotels, so Best Western Plus, Holland Expresses, Comfort Inns, that kind of thing, and in the boutique select service hotels, so a hundred unit uh, property that's not flagged with any uh, major brand. Uh, that has a rooftop bar, for example, you know, something that was boutique and unique. So I wanted to have, and that's what we've done. So, you know, 20% of my portfolio would be, you know, on the boutique side, select service, you know, historical building downtown that we convert into a hotel. And uh, uh, and the rest of it would be um, Holiday Express, Best Western Plus type properties. Oh, awesome. And that's what, and that's what we own. So tell me a little bit, <clears throat> With regards to your portfolio, mm -hmm. how have you guys been doing with, with uh, you know, occupancy levels since 2020 when the pandemic kicked in? You know, you mentioned some of your stuff, maybe uh, comfort economy and things of that nature. Um, I, I, I tend to think the uh, economy guys probably fared a little bit better during the pandemic. But, but how's your portfolio been doing uh, in 2020? Are you guys starting to see some rebound? Yeah, we are seeing some rebound in 2021. The 2020 was rough for everybody. There's no questions asked. Um, I have a couple of my hotels, though, that were in uh, secondary markets uh, that weren't affected that much. One of them had a lot of military business. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, in Florence, Arizona, uh, so a lot of uh, Marines training for, uh, from uh, uh, airborne school. They were jumping, you know, their parachute team. And um, 
that hotel did very, very well. Even during the pandemic, uh, we had a, maybe a one or two months that were much lower because the, even the military stopped traveling. Uh, but that was it. As soon as they came back, you know, we did well. Um, the one I have in Prescott, Arizona, uh, it's more of a blue collar town, you know, a lot of workers, a lot of uh, new development, uh, residential re development that were being done that never really stopped during the pandemic. Uh, so these two hotels did well. Uh, out of the six hotels, I have two that I'm still uh, working really hard to catch up. The four, the other four are stable. The PPP money uh, helped us out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Even though revenue slowed down, our cash position got better, so we weren't in any danger. The other two, one is on the Navajo Nation um, uh, land uh, in Chimney, Arizona, which is close to the Four Corners. Uh, there's a, a very famous canyon there called Canyon de Shea. Well, the Navajo Nation, even at this time, are keeping that canyon closed. And so this, yeah, and we have a restaurant there that's really, really good for locals, but we are still just on a to-go basis there. Uh, so it's a, that one is, is, is just I'm at the mercy of local laws, right? So it's, uh, uh, and 90% of all Navajo um, uh, 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 citizen actually uh, have been vaccinated already. So now we're starting to be, you know, putting a little bit of pressure on the, uh, right, right. Our whole president uh, to say, "Hey, come on, you, we, you need to reopen." Right. And uh, <clears throat> that that hotel specifically thrives during the summers on international workers, international uh, travelers. Sorry. Okay. So, so even if the um, American society or the American citizens are going to start traveling more during the second half of 2021, um, I don't see a lot of international travelers coming back to the Grand Canyon area before 2022. So that's really what we, we were working with our lenders right now uh, to, to brace ourselves until then. Right. Um, but we, we were able to, you know, cut our staff uh, uh, to the extent that we, you know, maintain the bare minimums, making sure that we, uh, that we're lean and, and uh, um, stay open. We never closed. Right. So uh, hopefully we uh, we maintain it that way until then, and uh, and they reopen the canyon. So maybe we have more uh, out of state Americans coming down to the Grand Canyon instead of uh, um, international travelers. So hopefully yeah. we can stay with that. Yeah, and, we're uh, all. Yeah, we. I think we're all hoping that uh, uh, folks will start trying to uh, get out a little bit more. The good thing about the canyon is that it's outdoors, so it's a great outdoor adventure, right? So hopefully come and visit. We're here. <laughs> come and visit. Hopefully we'll get more folks out to visit and help you guys out. So uh, talk a little bit about your hotel brokerage side. Have you been able to uh, still keep that business going as well? Maybe you were able to help some guys that might have been, um, you know, trying to to uh, uh, relieve themselves of some properties because of the situation. How's that? How's that side of your business going? So during the 2020, during the year 2020, this was also very difficult because, um, you know, the sellers didn't know if this was going to um, go on forever. And now the value of their hotels were really affected or if, you know, by miracle, we would see a spike up uh, in, in a big, nice, nice recovery. So, uh, so the sellers were keeping their expectations pretty high on pricing and the buyers were very nervous. And even if you had a buyer and a seller, you know, agree to terms, financing was nowhere to be found for the majority of, of 2020. Still today, you know, you have um, difficult times to find a lender that will actually be comfortable lending on hotels. Um, but uh, I've seen this change in the last quarter of 2020 and 2021. So on the upper echelon, where all the CMBS notes are, you know, I'm talking the bigger friend, the bigger uh, uh, box, the bigger hotels, uh, and their industrial or corporate owners, um, they usually don't have any personal guarantees towards those loans, and they have access to their lenders directly. And it's either, you know, here's the keys, you can come after me in any ways, or they'll do a workout of some sort with those with those banks. So that is actually being taken care of at that level if you want 
The where I can come in and really help um, is on the smaller uh, uh, size guys, the people that have hotels that have, they bought the hotels between three to twelve million. It's a huge gap, but the three to twelve million dollar uh, area is where um, these hotels were either financed uh, through community banks. Uh, there's usually a recourse, meaning that there's personal guarantees involved, um, and the, the, those smaller banks cannot just write off these notes, right? So they have to, and, and, and there's a personal relationship between a, this banker normally and the borrower, uh, and nobody wants to break that, but at some point, if you can't go on, you can't go on, right? The banks has the, the, the responsibilities. And, and this is where we can come in. As a broker during the first downturn, I helped a lot of these mid-size owners or smaller size owners to either unload the hotel for the for what they owed or a little bit more than what they owed and or were, I was able to successfully um, uh, structure several short sales where um, uh, you know the bank takes a little bit of a haircut but we, we still make sure that the borrower um, personal guarantees are not enforced uh, we did all sorts of creative um, transactions that way where we came in not as a shark not wanting to go and foreclose or you know come in at a at, 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 with a steel price um, we came in with the intent of protecting the borrower as much as we could representing the bank and having you know a deal that would be um, beneficial to the buyer as well and by creating those win-win-win situation uh, Community banks don't see us come in, come in as a as a threat at that point. Neither does the borrower. We're here to to help, and uh, hopefully the PPP money and the stimulus uh, package are going to allow most of these guys to survive 2021 still. And hopefully, you know, things really pick up during third and fourth quarter of this year, and you know we can not look into uh, uh, flurries of foreclosures, but if that doesn't happen, we can help um, on, the, on the brokerage side. We definitely can help uh, uh, the mid-size owners to, to survive this as well and deal with their banks and their behalf and vice versa. Right. You know, some banks would, may actually call us and say, can you help my guy? You know, we don't want to foreclose. We don't, you know, we have a long lasting relationship with him. Um, can you help us, you know, right. figure this out? Did you find that some of the guys that you saw running into trouble uh, that you were trying to help kind of finagle the situation. Um, did you find that they had bought the property at the high end of the cycle or, you know, kind of like that pre 2019 when, you know, the hotel industry was just going like gangbuster, right? So everybody was kind of getting into hotel business because it's a great business to be in, but you know, did you find that the the mix of the clients that you're trying to help were kind of in that that pre 2019, maybe 2017, 2018 kind of area? Yeah, we we um, as a broker, I saw the price really spike in 2017. So 14 things were going up, 15 really nicely, 16 oh maybe we're gonna break those 2007 records of ref bar growth and all that good stuff, right? And 17 to 19 is where I think I saw a huge plateau in terms of pricing, but it was at the at the higher end. So whoever bought during, you know, end of 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, these are the people that are mostly uh, over leveraged or that lost the most equity the fastest, you know, between um, between uh, uh, 19 and 20. So these are the people that are going to be uh, that are going to need the most help. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you, you're going to be uh, still probably a guy in high demand uh, as we kind of get <laughs> as we try to get through this, right? Because there's a lot of folks that's probably trying to trying to figure out some creative uh, creative financing and figure out how they can extend the bandwidth. I know they just extended uh, the stimulus money a little bit more, and I think that kind of gave uh, the owners and the lenders a little bit more flexibility to work out a little bit longer, uh, uh, maybe solution as this thing kind of starts to come back or subside. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think you're, you're sitting 
front and center probably in a and a lot of people's uh, phones on speed dial probably huh well if if they need to uh, to visit us and talk to us we're open yeah. to any calls and would love to 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 help uh, you know as much as we can okay well awesome so so Alex so tell us how do folks find you if they need help uh, you know trying to to fix a solution or figure out a, a creative financing deal or even try to sell a, sell a property? How do they find it? The, the, the best way would be uh, through the, the our website, prohospitalitygroup.com. It's actually, the, the, web, the website is phgproperties.com is the, is the main website where all my, my divisions are uh, outlined. Okay. And, um, you know, they can uh, reach me directly at alex at phgproperties.com too. I have, I can, you know, uh, either myself or my agents would, would uh, uh, reply to anything. And, um, you know, once we get in contact, I'm very personable. My cell phone is, is going to be the way to, uh, to call me. You know, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we're, we're big, small company with, you know, big ideas, but they, we're easy to work with. Man, that's awesome. Well, hey, I definitely appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time to talk about uh, your company and uh, sounds exciting. I think we're both looking for 2021 to be uh, better and start taking a, a different path. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep going and hopefully by the end of 2021, we'll have something else to talk about. But uh, thank, thanks again for joining us this morning. Um, this is Ted with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Thank you guys. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.